I am David Gerstein. I'm the principal cellist of the Arkansas Symphony Orchestra, and I also perform in the Wapaw String Quartet. And today, I'm here to talk to you about my most favorite instrument of all time, the cello. Ta da This is the cello. Can you see me over it? Hi. So the cello is a member of the string family, uh, and it looks really similar to the violin and the viola and the double bass. But the main difference is that it is significantly larger than both the violin and the viola. So that means I have to sit down to play it. I guess you can't really tell that I'm sitting down right now, but I am here. That's me standing. That's me sitting. So the cello has a special thing on the bottom right here, the stickamabob. And this is called an end pin. I use the end pin. I use the end pin to prop up the cello so that I can play it sitting down because it would look really weird and it also wouldn't be possible for me to reach. See my hands all the way over here. I can't even reach the fingerboard. So I can't play it like a violin or a viola. Since the cello is larger than the violin and the viola, it plays lower. So I'll just give you an example of kind of the standard range that we play in going all the way down to our lowest note. So how do we make sound on a string instrument? First step, most of the time we play with this stickamabob, which is called the bow. Um, we take the bow and draw it across the string, like that. So when we play with the bow, we refer to that as arco. That's the Italian word to, for, to use the bow, arco. So basically what happens is we take the bow, put it on the string, and we pull the bow across the string, which makes the string wiggle back and forth, if you can see that. So that wiggle is called vibration. So the string vibrates, and that vibration gets transferred into this piece of wood, which is called the bridge. I'm just going to rotate it so you can kind of see what it looks like from different angles. The vibration enters the bridge, which transfers it into the middle of the instrument. You can't see it because I can't take the top off of the cello, but there's a wooden post right in the middle called the sound post. And so those vibrations get transferred into the sound post, and then they enter the body of the instrument, which is hollow. They bounce around all in there, and then they shoot out these holes in the front and that's the sound that we hear. Now I'm going to play an excerpt from the first movement of Ligeti's solo cello sonata. I chose this piece because it shows the, the beautiful lyrical side of the cello, and it also shows a few different ranges of the cello. You're going to hear some of the very low, beautiful tones, and then some of the more lyrical singing. Um, listen for the dialogue between those two different ranges and um, a special technique that we're going to talk about on the other side.
may have noticed at the very beginning of the Ligeti that I um, played pizzicato, which sounded like this. Pizzicato is the Italian word for plucking the string with our right hand. Um, remember earlier I told you that arco is when we play with the bow. Pizzicato is when we play plucking the strings. So next I'm going to play a piece by Benjamin Britten, a movement of his uh, first solo cello sonata. And this piece is special because it's all pizzicato. So you're going to hear me play um, single notes by themselves. You'll hear me play two notes at a time. You'll even see some strummed chords. And then you'll hear a few special effects. One of them is when I take my left hand to pluck the strings. It'll look like that. And then another one, which you also heard in the Ligeti, is a glissando pits. It happened right at the beginning of Ligeti, and it started like, sounded like this. That'll happen again in the next piece I'm about to play, but it sounds like this. So this is the serenata movement of Benjamin Britten's first suite for solo cello. of music and how these different layers come together to create the sound that you hear. The first layer we'll talk about is called melody. Melody is the most prominent thing that you hear in a piece of music and it's what you would be singing to yourself or hearing in your head after you left a concert hall. Here's an example of a famous melody. <laughs> fine on its own, but I think that we can make it sound a little more interesting by adding another layer. So we're going to add a second layer called harmony. Harmony plays right along with the melody, but it makes it sound a little fuller and more beautiful. So I'm going to play it again with two layers, melody and harmony, 
and I want you to listen to how the melody stays on top, but the harmony adds a second layer that makes it sound a little more full and lush. Ready? One, two. <laughs> still make it a little more interesting. So we're going to add a third layer, which is called accompaniment. We use accompaniment to add a little bit of texture and color to the sound. So can you show us what the accompaniment sounds like on its own? Okay. So let's put all of those three layers together. I'll be playing the melody and then next to me, which, uh, is it which side, this side, this side, somewhere, you can hear the harmony and the accompaniment. Okay, let's go. One, two. <laughs> The bass line plays the lowest notes of all of the four layers and provides an anchor for the music. Can you show us what the bass line sounds like? Right. And one more time, can you just remind us what the harmony sounds like on its own? And can we hear the accompaniment one more time on its own? to hear the melody on its own. So let's put all four parts together. This is going to be really cool. One, two. <laughs> piece because you, you'll hear all of the different ranges of the cello. You'll hear me playing really high up, you'll hear me play in the middle and low, and you can hear all of the different layers that we talked about. Melody, harmony, accompaniment, and bass line. And the bass line in this piece is played all pizzicato. So I hope you enjoy Bile Them Cabbage Down. <laughs> Thank you. 